Hello, thanks for joining me. In this video, I visit the Church of St Dogviles at Melinay near Newport, Pembrokeshire. The church is redundant now, but is cared for by the Friends of Friendless Churches. It's tucked away down a lane and there's no village nearby. It's a very small Victorian church, but it's a little gem. It was built to replace an earlier church which was, as churches often were in this area, in a very poor condition, described as a ruinous barn with a clay floor and just four seats. On the north side we can see the only thing that survives from the former church, this blocked up doorway which is medieval and has very crude square heads with googly eyes. It's hidden round the back but at least it was preserved. This really is a small church, 51 and a half feet long to be precise and only 18 feet wide in the nave and 14 in the chancel, which has an attractive apse shape with five sides. The vestry on the north side, with an interesting chimney, is extremely narrow. The porch is on the south side and on the west is this remarkably fine rose window. More about that later. The architect was Robert Jewell Withers, who designed several churches in this area and who was particularly talented when it came to designing small churches on small budgets. The budget for this was a very limiting £530. It was built in the mid-1860s. Let's go inside and see what the Pevsner Guide to Buildings in Pembrokeshire calls an object lesson in high Victorian geometry and minimal extraneous detail. Geometry rather than surface decoration is definitely the theme here. Withers really didn't have cash to splash, so he concentrated on shape and structure to make the church attractive. The nave has two staggered windows on the sides, with one matching window on the south side of the chancel. They are plain plate tracery windows, flush with the walls, a Withers signature. To add interest, each has a different shape in the top, a quatrefoil, a trefoil, and in the chancel, a Star of David. This star is explained in some text in the porch as being donated by a local Jewish family who worshipped here on a Saturday. I think this is a myth. I certainly can't find any evidence for the claim and it seems very unlikely. It's a better explanation to say the architect was trying to make the windows a bit more interesting without incurring any extra expense. His usual windows in small churches have either no piercing at the top, being just a pair of cusped lancets, or, if pierced, having a quatrefoil, but here I think he was enjoying himself a bit. His patron was Sir Thomas Lloyd of Bronwith, who was the marcher Lloyd of Camice, and spent rather more than he could afford on turning his own house into a Gothic fantasy castle, and restoring Newport Castle so he could live in it occasionally. Which brings us back to that marvellous rose window. If you look at Withers' original plan for the church displayed in the vestry here, the west window appears to be wide with three lancets and would have fitted into the arch shape we see surrounding the rose window, with a taller lancet in the middle and two shorter ones on each side with roundels on the top, rather like this one which he designed for Tlangoidmore Church and which also has stars of David in the top, which I also think puts to bed that story about the Jewish family. The setting of this circular window doesn't match the settings of Withers' other windows and lacks the flat exterior found on his usual work. It just doesn't look like one of his to me. So what's going on here? It has been suggested that this window was actually made for Bronwith and designed by the architect of that building, R.K. Penson, but taken out shortly afterwards. If Sir Thomas Lloyd had such a good piece of architectural lumber sitting around unused, it would make sense to put it in here. I don't think the £530 church budget would have allowed for it otherwise. Whatever the origin of this window, it adds a good deal of light to the nave and the lack of stained glass gives the church a remarkably light and airy feel, despite its cramped dimensions. The information text in the porch says that the font is from the original church. I think this is wrong too. Its pared-back geometry is all with us. Unfortunately, it has been painted, which really doesn't do anything for it. 
The benches and other fittings are cheap pitch pine, but again geometry in form or minimal decoration is typical of Withers. There are a few tiny Gothic ironwork details, such as the hinge on the pulpit, door hinges, font cover and the boot scraper by the door. The roof in the nave has timber bracing and sank foils to add a bit of decoration, but the chancel roof is closed and plastered. The chancel has more pitch pine fittings, still simple, but with a bit more of a flourish. Money being very tight, there are no fancy tiles on the floor, but to mark its distinction, the sanctuary has yellow as well as black and terracotta used elsewhere. The Reredos does have good tiles, though. In a better funded church, you might find five coloured mint and tiles like this on the floor, but here they provided a cheap and colourful altarpiece. The only other colour comes from the single stained glass lancet in the east window. The jewel coloured glass is by Lavers and Barrowed. Withers always recommended them, and depicts Christ on the cross in gloriously glowing colour, made all the more striking by the plainness of the rest of the building. The tiny vestry, accessed by this narrow door, is only a few feet wide and very cramped. It contains this diagonally set fireplace to warm the clergyman after his long journey to this remote church, and an ornbury to store communion vessels. Now it holds the electricity meter. On the vestry wall is this board recording a grant of £75 by the Incorporated Society for Building and Churches towards the construction of St Dogviles, with the usual provision that the seats are to be free. People, usually the gentry, used to have to pay pew rent if they wanted a decent seat. So, that was St Dogviles Melinae. A little gem by the appropriately named Robert Jewell Withers, or Bargain Withers as I think of him, a man who could work wonders with very little funding. I hope you found this tour interesting, and if you want to see the church yourself, it's open daily. Please remember to click the like button before you leave this video, and as always, thank you for watching.